Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The event will begin in five minutes. Mesdames et messieurs, veuillez prendre place. L'événement va débuter dans cinq minutes.
Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The event is about to begin. Mesdames et messieurs, veuillez prendre place. L'événement est sur le point de commencer. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The event is about to begin. Mesdames et messieurs, veuillez prendre place. L'événement est sur le point de commencer. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, friends of the ocean. And welcome to the opening ceremony of Impact 5, the 5th International Marine Protected Areas Congress. Bon après-midi, chers amis de l'océan, et bienvenue à cette cérémonie d'ouverture du 5e Congrès international des aires marines protégées. Nous sommes reconnaissants d'être rassemblés sur les terres ancestrales des nations Musqueam, Squamish et Tsleil-Waututh pour ce congrès. We want to acknowledge how grateful we are to the host First Nations, Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh for welcoming us into their traditional territories for this Congress. Before we get started, please take a moment to turn off your cell phones or anything that could ring during this opening ceremony. Avant de commencer, veuillez prendre un moment pour désactiver toutes les alertes et sonneries sur vos téléphones et appareils téléphoniques. Now, from the Pacific Coast, please join me in welcoming, accueillons chaleureusement, our host, First Nations.
Awesome. Chin kun man told me we ought to know up see I chit. Slate kuns kun man ought to know up. Quis why up made lack no more eighty to salt to milk. Name it, let's hope Michelle Stalmach. Name it, let's hope Michelle Stalmach. A slate chit quis men lolum, men quaid to slolum chit. Quis me kun myas chowan, he scoched his not. You want men hot squalow and chit, quis chit etiti, as cocot lanoyap, as cocot a sequatal chit, was chet he elsh, not to schenten. Chit me etiti, quis men chechais to swam chit, quatsi was te maswe, quis chit me at psalm to sol si quiet, quis natum to sol snatum, and quis lolum to sol slolum. Chinkerman told me up to know up, say I quis chit. Eighty as Kokot Lenoya, please. Wanna thank each and every one of you for being here tonight and welcome you here to the territories of our people. We on the stage here are the Schotmish people. We're the Schotmish people and we wanted to come here and share a, a few songs and a little bit of language with each and every one of you here tonight. The song that you just heard here was a song, it's a paddle song. And the first beat is the same beat that we paddle to in our canoes. And this all represents our ancestors coming in on a canoe. And when they get to where they're going, they have a celebration and the song picks up and it lifts our spirits in the sky so we have a good day today. Also, I want to thank our family who's out. We have some family members from our three host nations who are out here in the crowd here just dressed in the clothes that our ancestors gave us. You know, we're happy to come and speak a bit of our language, wear a bit of, a, a bit of our clothes, and, and sing some of our songs here with each and every one of you. Prayers for the day, for the, the events that are coming. We're going to share one more song here on behalf of our people, 
And this song is a stompsh slolem. In our language, stompsh is warrior. And you'll see our dancers here are going to dance to this warrior song. And the language, the chalnich in the song, talk about being ready, being ready for battle to protect our people. Again, want to thank each and every one of you for being here today. And we're happy to be here to share a little bit, a little tiny bit of our culture with you here to show that it's still alive, it's still going, all the stuff we've been through. We're here speaking our language, sharing our songs, and we're glad that we get to do it with each and every one of you here tonight. Osium. Awesome. So again, we're the Skolmish people, but we're really happy to be here sharing this stage with our friends and relatives from the Tsleil-Waututh people and the Khumatskwim people. So up next is our friends and relatives from the Tsleil-Waututh nation. Awesome. Squire, Tanoya, Nemeth, Manman, Atkaya, Emin, Amset, Manman, A.T. Askako, to Nemeth, just saying good day, everyone. We are children of Takaya. We're from Slaywood Oath. Um, just like to give uh, thanks and acknowledgement to our Siamset uh, school also known as Slay with Tooth Nation School, which are here with us today. Uh, the first song we're going to share with you is Swautchen um, Slolem, also known as a swan song and dance.
Hoi Chaipa, once again, that was our swan song and dance. The next song we're going to share with you is uh, Takaya Slolom, also known as a wolf song and dance, also known as our clan dance. I just want to thank the organizers for inviting us here today. Up next, we have our relatives coming up to share a little bit of who they are. Once again, uh, thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone, my dear brothers and sisters. Standing up here today, I have my brother Yetsetsa, my son Oscar, our chief Yokyakulak, and our wonderful elders from our Homathquiam nation. Very honored to stand in front of you today, share a bit of our culture and a couple of our songs. The song we walked out to is our Homathquiam paddle song. And we'd also like to share our, our, uh, our welcome song with all of you. So I raise my hands to each and every one of you. Such amazing performances. Thank you once again for this very special welcome. Un grand merci pour ces performances mémorables. Bonjour à tous. Quel privilège d'être rassemblés avec vous ici aujourd'hui. Je m'appelle Émilie Leclerc et je serai votre guide tout au long de cette cérémonie d'ouverture. 
Hello everyone, my name is Emily Leclerc, and I will be your MC for today. It's such an honor to be gathered here in this room with you all. People have traveled from all over the world, from 123 countries, to take a stand to protect what we all have in common, the global ocean, our beautiful blue nature. Here are, are, here are a few words from the representatives of our host First Nations to welcome you here. Chief Wayne Sparrow from Musqueam Indian Band, Councillor Wilson Williams from Squamish Nation, Councillor Charlene Alec from Tsleil-Waututh Nation. You can come up to the stage. Oh, there you are. <laughs> My name is Wayne Spur, I'm the elected chief of the Musqueam First Nation. My traditional name is Yakalak. On behalf of our elders and our community from Musqueam, it's a privilege and honor to welcome each and every one of you here. I've been the elected chief now for uh, going on 11 years, and to have our elders here that guide us is great, and I want to welcome, but I especially want to welcome all the indigenous leaders, dignitaries that are here from other countries to our ter shared territory. As you can see from Musqueam on our letterhead, we have a salmon on there. Our community is a fishing community, and it's so important when we have our little guy sitting here and his children that we have to protect what our ancestors passed down to each and every one of us. It's so important as indigenous people in this land, the resources and the marine protection that we have to do so, so that we can survive as First Nations people. I want to close once again by thanking all of our singers and dancers from three communities that represent us so well. I'm the elected chief, but with my cousin and my nephews, I'm below them. They have a responsibility to do on behalf of our community. And I want to acknowledge all of my cousins from Squamish and Salatooth also for taking on that role and responsibility on e each one of us's behalf. Without them, we're lost. So once again, Aichka CM, look forward to seeing you over the next few days and hopefully uh, good outcomes of meeting. Aichka, thank you. On Hoth and Squawan, Quisclake, Quichnomi, Tenoyopin and Ziyayat, to Squiles to Seeds, Kayachtan. I'd like to say welcome to our ter ancestral territorial lands, and I'm really good feelings in our hearts and minds to see all of you, our friends that you're here today and for the next week. Kai Ochten, welcome. Sequalia Kwashaman Sna, my name is Sequalia, also known as Anne Wanick. I'm an elected councillor for Squamish Nation and one of the spokespersons along with my nephew here who's going to speak on behalf of our nation. Thank you, Auntie Sequalia. Echoing the words from our families, 
not only the words, but the embracefulness, the welcome we had together as nations to come through the doors for such a prestigious event. In such challenging times in the world, it's our Indigenous peoples respectfully throughout the world that are coming together to share the teachings, not only our connections to the land, but our connections to the water. How we sustained, how we broke through barriers and challenges of survival to hold up, like our chief said, holding up each other for the next generations. The times today will define what unity means today. How we come together from international events like this. We want to welcome all of you. Our people would travel by the water only travel by canoes, move our homes in canoes, transport our, our fish, our, our sustenance from the waters by canoe. Through technology and through the years, things have changed, but we never forget who we are and where we come from. Reason why I brought up indigenous peoples and their sacredness to a connection to the lands and waters. Because it's who we are and where we come from. In order to know that helps us pave the way for tomorrow. I really want to acknowledge our families from the three nations that are here today. I got to share some words I said in the green room. I felt so empowered seeing our families come together, especially when they opened their regalia bags. We shared stories and history together, shared our languages. It's times like these and events that come together, we're able to open up again and share, share our stories. We want to welcome you to our beaches, to the lands where we celebrate. Our people acknowledge the land here as Kam Kamalai because it's the place of great maple trees. I share this because I, every time I wake up in the morning, there's a map on my wall of 1850 of Vancouver where it was just green. And it also had the animals that traveled through here that you don't see today. Just along Granville Street, I'm sure you've been there or heard of it. The place where we hunted deer that flocked, but we shared the lands with, with the wildlife. And it's a little something I wanted to connect all of you to, to the land you are visiting or revisiting or live today. With that, on behalf of Skohoma Shokhomeo, our families, we welcome you all. Safe journeys for many walks you, you come from. Hope you can ca carry this smoke signal back to your homelands so we can unite and come together. And it won't be the last time. Chin Quinman told me up. Yohan Hoth and Squalon. I won't be remiss. My my dear auntie said I should introduce myself. I'm Swelchten. You co-op some ochomelch, laslahan ochomelch, skohot mesh ochomelch, stomoch. My English name is Wilson Williams. Uh, my ancestral name comes from my fam, my dad's, my dad's side of. Uh, the Williams side of Uquapsum, a village up in the Squamish River. So, uh, thank you.
Sim talat quana squi talitsin at slow at all e stalo tamata chi am a siamalalo tamen tiaktana ta ten eight tenashqualo and tini to e. Just letting you know in my language my ancestral name and my parents who, whom gives me the ties to these traditional territories here that you now know as Vancouver. Um, and not only recognizing my ties, but the responsibility that I have to walk in these footsteps that they have left for us as Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh people. We had no borders here. We shared this territory as a big family. We loved the land. We loved the salt water. We loved the fresh salmon-bearing creeks. And we could travel anywhere that you see. And it was abundant. So with that, I want to invite into the room one of our oldest ancestors. It's the water. As you see, we adorn ourselves with things that she recognizes. Slaywat of people means people of this inlet. This is the inlet right here that we see out this window. And as you travel up it, that is the heartland of where we were born from. The things that we adorn ourselves when we represent us as Khumluk people, that's the caretakers, the original peoples, the two-leggeds that walk this earth of this territory. We were also cared for and looked after by the wolf. And as you saw earlier, our dance group was Children of Takaya. So we raise our hands to the wolf mother who took care of our first grandfather. In, I also want to um, congratulate all of you for being here making it through that hard time of that pandemic and arriving here safely and coming into the territory with those precious thoughts and prayers for the water. Whether it be salt water or fresh water, the rushing water, the calm water, we each have a bit of that either in our hearts and followed through with the work that we do so I want to raise my hands. On behalf of our school here, we um, opted to, um, we have some elders, but we opted to bring most of our children at Tsleil-Waututh. We know we reach back to that ancestral knowledge and take what we need because our ancestors lived a life here that sustained themselves for thousands of years. And it wasn't until the point of contact things started to, um, plants started to go and animals started to go. Um, so just reaching back to that knowledge and showing our children these are the ways that we uphold our indigenous law. Not just at home or in our school, but abroad on a global stage like we are today, along with our relatives from Musqueam and Squamish. And I didn't witness it, but I heard also our relatives in the next room, the Hawaiians do their protocol. And I got to meet some of our um, coastal First Nation uh, relatives come in and acknowledge gathering within our home here. So I just want to raise my hands to those matriarchs, those leaders, those CMs, those respected ones that have made their way for this very important cause because we all need clean water. We all need fresh air and a place to live. And as we see here, we maximize when we're by that water, that waterfront. Um, we all cherish it and it's a majestic thing for all of us. So how we can combine our thoughts and our work together to take care of Mother Earth and the salt water and the fresh water. Haït sepawa to everyone as well for bringing all your um, good work into the room and thanking, thanking again all the youth 
that are going to be carrying this, the decisions and the discussions and the conversations and the relationships that we build today in the next few days are for our children. Not just our children, but your children as well. And may they come together in this good way as well. And just really with a warm heart, good feelings in my heart, welcoming you all here. Hi, Sep Awash. Once again, thank you so much to the representatives of Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations for these very inspiring words. Thank you. J'aimerais maintenant vous inviter à vous lever, si vous le pouvez, pour l'hymne national du Canada. Now, if you're able, please rise for the national anthem of Canada. Merci. Veuillez maintenant prendre place. Thank you. You can now take your seats. A very special thank you to the Naden Band of the Royal Canadian Navy for providing music before, during, and after today's ceremony and at the Ocean Festival. And to the Naden Band Jazz Quintet who will be performing in the lobby following this very opening ceremony. Un grand merci au Naden Band de la Marine Royale Canadienne. J'ai maintenant, maintenant le plaisir de vous présenter nos invités d'honneur. It is now my great pleasure to introduce our honor party, some of whom you will have the pleasure of hearing from today, during today's ceremony. Please welcome, accueillons chaleureusement, the Honorable Joyce Murray, Minister of Fisheries, Oceans, and the Canadian Coast Guard. Ms. Alexandra Dostal, Fisheries and Oceans Canada, Ms. Darlene Upton, Parks Canada, Ms. Nicole Côté, Environment and Climate Change Canada, Rear Admiral Christopher Robinson, Commander Maritime Forces Pacific and Joint Task Force Pacific, Mr. Amandeep Singh, British Columbia Parliamentary Secretary for Environment, Ms. Sandra Schwartz, National Executive Director, the Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society. Dr. Madhu Rowe, International Union for the Conservation of Nature. And Ms. Olivia Livingstone, Young People Professional Representative. And Mr. Peter Thompson, United Nations Special Representative for the Ocean. I also want to take this opportunity to acknowledge our host organizations, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, the Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society, Fisheries and Oceans Canada, Parks Canada, Environment and Climate Change Canada, and the Government of British Columbia. Without the commitment and unstinting support of these organizations, none of us would be here today. So let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you. J'aimerais maintenant inviter au podium, I now invite to come up on stage, the Honorable Joyce Murray, 
Minister of Fisheries, Oceans, and the Canadian Coast Guard. Well, thank you, uh, Emily, and honorable colleagues, friends, and partners on behalf of the Government of Canada. Welcome to Impact 5. This is the fifth International Marine Protected Areas Congress, and welcome to Vancouver, here on the traditional unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations on the shores of the Pacific Ocean. And what a powerful, powerful opening ceremony with the drummers, with the performers, and with those very powerful words of the indigenous leaders on whose territory we are today. So I just felt their invocation invoking that we work together in a good way to get the results that we are all aiming for in terms of uh, marine protection. Honorable colleagues, amis et partenaires, au nom du gouvernement du Canada, bienvenue à Impact 5, le cinquième congrès international sur, sur les aires marines protégées, et bienvenue à Vancouver sur les territoires traditionnels non cédés des nations Musqueam, Squamish et Tsleil-Waututh sur les rives de l'océan Pacifique. So I'm really grateful to the host nations for setting the, the tone here today, as well as the province of British Columbia, the IUCN, Canada Parks and Wilderness Society, for working with our government to make this Congress possible. So much work by so many people and so much heart has gone into it. So for me, the sea of faces before me represents some of the world's best and brightest minds in ocean conservation, marine protection experts, indigenous leaders, policy makers, and young professionals, people who've dedicated their lives and careers to a healthier ocean and a healthier planet. That passion to protect the oceans and restore nature is one I share with you. I'm sure we all have a story or a reason that led us here, and I'm curious about yours. So I'll just tell you a little bit about mine, which started on the west coast of Vancouver Island years ago when I was a tree planter. I was halfway through my day planting trees, walking down a skid road when I saw that the forest had been logged virtually all the way down to the edge of the ocean. And I think it was the image of nature being pushed to the brink that initially caught my attention when I then saw a large pod of killer whales working their way along the coast southwards. And, and I'd never seen that before. I'd need, never seen anything quite like it out in that wilderness, something so powerful and so special. And it was the glory of nature and the thoughtless way it was being exploited what a contrast. So over time, that moment uh, actually helped to change my career path because I was in university as a pre-med student and I shifted to environmental, to building a reforestation business and then to environmental policy and climate change and eventually public service as a way to make change. So that moment at Port Eliza changed everything for me and I wonder what brought you here what similar experience you may have had. And despite our different backgrounds, areas of expertise, life experiences, and cultures, I know we're all here today because we share a common goal to bequeath our children and grandchildren a healthy, livable world. Looking out at the waterfront, people would be forgiven for thinking that the Pacific Ocean is invincible. Actually, it covers one third of the planet's surface. It's huge, it's deep. What most people don't see, however, is the complex web of marine life below it, at, below the surface, and how our actions are threatening the delicate ecological balances there. So we here in the room and many others know that oceans are vital to who we are and our way of life, and we certainly felt that, I think, from our opening ceremonies. Oceans feed us, 
they employ us, they protect us, we use them for our transportation, trade, and tourism. There are sources of renewable and non-renewable energies, and they're, they're places of solace and spiritual connection. But they're much more than that even. The oceans produce oxygen, regulate our climate and weather patterns, and our natural carbon sinks. This makes them critical allies in the fight against climate change. Oceans are as crucial to our survival as the air we breathe. If we really want to protect our planet, we must protect our oceans. And one way we can do this is by expanding the world's network of marine protected areas and other effective area-based conservation me measures. Everyone in the room knows that. That's why you're here, and it's how to do that. So for the world to achieve our biodiversity goals on land and in the oceans, in the next eight years, we have some heavy lifting to do or heavy paddling to do from this, our earlier examples, but we are here today because we know that it's possible. With the longest coastline in the world, Canada is home to some of the most productive and diverse marine ecosystems on the planet. But did you, did you know that before 2015, less than 1% of Canada's marine coastal areas were protected? Less than 1%. Over the last eight years, that number has grown to over 14%, and we're on track to protect 25% by 2025 and 30% of our marine and coastal areas by 2030, and we are determined to accomplish that. Yes. I was really heartened to see my friend Minister Gilbo announce earlier today a new policy guiding the establishment and management of national marine conservation areas, which of, of course will help achieve the goal of creating uh, 10 new ones that will be part of the 25% of the, uh, and 30%. And our formula for success in Canada and around the world is based on partnerships, real partnerships with people who are impacted the most. Our government respects the sovereign rights of Indigenous peoples and their ecological knowledge. We can't do this without Indigenous peoples. We will continue to build meaningful partnerships to do this work together. This Congress is about fostering discussion on marine protection and how we can increase the global coverage and share ideas on the right places and, importantly, effective standards for their protection. Ce Congrès a pour but d'encourager la discussion sur la protection marine, notamment sur la manière d'accroître la couverture mondiale des zones marines protégées et de partager des idées sur les endroits appropriés et les normes efficaces pour leur protection. Impact 5 is also an opportunity to discuss how marine protected areas can be managed, monitored, and enforced within the context of a changing climate. As the oceans continue to warm, humanity will be relying heavily on science, including indigenous science and local knowledge, to help us understand what is and what isn't working. Collecting this data and effectively monitoring and managing MPAs requires all of us, including academics, indigenous and local community members and, in and industry leaders to work together. Despite the many challenges facing oceans, there is real cause for optimism. There is momentum. There are leaders like you in this room and so many others who are pushing the envelope. The passion and ingenuity that you represent is truly inspiring. Impact 5 can help us put the marine conservation agenda front and center on the global agenda and ensure that oceans are firmly anchored in all future climate negotiations. So I wish you each a very productive conference. I look forward to seeing what we can accomplish together in the days, in the weeks, and the months ahead. The work is just starting in a way. We'll be doing this together. We'll figure it out together. And with the 
with a, a room full of people with so much heart and knowledge and commitment. Uh, I know we can do it. So thank you very much for being here. Merci. Have fun over this week. Merci. Thank you, Minister Murray. Speaking of thanks, we would like to acknowledge our sponsors. So I draw your attention to the names on the screens. Nous aimerions remercier nos commanditaires. S'il vous plaît, regardez les écrans. Et maintenant, pour ajouter un peu de musique à notre cérémonie d'ouverture, please allow me to introduce a remarkable woman from one of Canada's indigenous people, the Métis, a five-time Gemini-nominated actress, a 15-time Music Award winner, and the Actra National Woman of 2021, representing Canada's rivers and lakes. Please welcome Andrea Menard. Tanchi Kiwao. That means hello, everyone. Tanchi. <laughs> I am truly honored to be here. Thank you for that introduction. And thank you, Marcy, to the four host nations. They started off with prayers. Ah, that's my kind of conference, a place where we make room for prayer. And that's why I'm here. I'm uh, going to sing for you. My name is Andrea Menard, and I'm a Métis woman from Treaty 1 territory in the homeland of the Métis. And my people are river people, so I have a lot to learn about these oceans. <laughs> I have a lot to learn from my host nation, brothers and sisters. But I have been taught by my elders in a good way, and I've been taught that it is my responsibility as a woman, as a life giver, to sing my water songs to the ocean and to the, to the waters of the world, to the waters of my body, to the waters of you. So I have written some songs that are giveaway songs. So they're giveaways for you. If you want to take away songs to sing to the waters of your homelands, that's what these songs were written for because I know many, many people have lost their songs. And if you haven't, keep singing them and share them, but these are ones for you to take away. This one is sung in the Michif language. And this is a simple song for a private, uh, a private prayer. And it's saying, I am a protector of the water. Creator, help me bless the water. I see the future. Creator, help me protect the water. That's all I'm saying. Yan <laughs> Yo we Yo, we hey, hey, yeah, we are. 
Merci. Merci. So the next song I'm going to sing, many of you are here because of your love for the waters. And that goes a long way, the love. And there's science, and there's government policy, and there's technology, but there's love first. And I hope that you will remember that prayer is a way of sending our love. So this song I have translated into several languages. So I hope that where you come from, in a few months, you'll send me a message saying, I translated into Icelandic, Japanese, German, OK? Deal? <laughs> and I apologize to those who actually speak the language. But there is some English, so if you sing along with me, you might know it by the end. May the waters of me hey, hey, sing for the waters of you. Hey, hey. I offer this prayer in this honoring song so the waters right here renew, renew. Irish language. Here we go. Go me on tishke anam e kanadon tishke anat bani man fadir isura nanor go lai so on tishke shariz la. Okay, you know the melody now. Back to English. May the waters of me hi hi sing for the waters of you hi hi. I offer this prayer and this honoring song so the waters right here renew, renew. Sing with me. Renew. right here renew so the waters right here renew Marcy Miigwech Kieran Askompton Oh 
Un grand merci. Thank you to Andrea Menard. It is now my great pleasure to introduce the Young Professional Committee. Please come onto the stage. J'aimerais maintenant inviter sur scène le Comité des Jeunes Professionnels de l'Impact 5. You can learn more about these exceptional young individuals by visiting our Chime platform. Speaking on their behalf, please welcome, accueillons chaleureusement, Ms. Olivia Livingstone. Yeah. Hello and welcome everyone to Impact 5. Impact 5 has been intentional about significantly increasing the number of young people who participate at this conference. Have we been able to achieve this? Well, looking at the impressive number of excited, curious, a bit anxious, but inspired faces of youths in this hall today and the youth-centered activities we have planned for this Congress, I will say a resounding yes, we did achieve it. We, st <laughs> we the Young Professional Committee, started the Impact 5 journey in July 2021 and it has been a truly insightful journey. For almost two years, we have worked with our wonderful coordinator, Kimberly Anthony, and her team to ensure that youths are not only encouraged to attend the Congress, but that their participation leaves a significant imprint on the Congress activities and that their voices are reflected in the outcomes of this event. The YPC team is still committed to charting the course to protect 30% of the world's oceans by 2030 through the implementation and hosting of dialogues on the themes and streams of this Congress. Our commitment, however, requires the support of you, our leaders, our decision makers, our scientists, our advocates, and every other friend of the ocean here today. There is still hope for the ocean. To achieve 30% by 2030, we need to walk on similar paths. We need to be resolute about the compliance and implementation of ocean laws and policies and all the many international and local agreements, resolutions, conventions, and visions that we share. We need to be open to different perspectives, knowledge systems, and beliefs. We must recognize all stakeholders and ensure that they are included in all decision-making processes. There is, again, still hope for the ocean. I saw beams of it in the voices of everyone I have interacted with since I arrived in Canada for Impact 5. Our job today is to retain and build this hope by protecting our beloved ocean for the indigenous peoples, for the fisher folks, for the divers, surfers, beach lovers, and every friend of the ocean. We are confident that this Congress can achieve all of its goals, and we are here to support the process every single step of the way. Thank you to Impact 5 for giving us the YPC members, including Ruth and Yara, who are not here today, but are here virtually, the opportunity to serve. And thanks to you all for supporting us and caring for the world's ocean. Thank you.
un grand merci à notre comité des jeunes professionnels de l'Impact 5. A big thank you to Miss Olivia Livingstone and to our Young Professional Committee. These are not the only young people experiencing Impact 5 today. On your way to the Congress, you might have seen students around the Ocean Festival at the plaza just outside this building. The Ocean Festival is Impact 5's outreach to the region. Thanks to the Canadian Ocean Literacy Coalition, earlier today, hundreds of school children from this region attended ocean learning activities as part of the festival. C'est génial, n'est-ce pas? Maintenant, nous avons le plaisir de visionner une vidéo créée spécifiquement pour ce congrès. Now, we have the great pleasure of viewing this special Impact 5 opening ceremony video created by National Geographic Pristine Seas. The ocean gives us much. It provides for us protects us, thrills us, and it unites us. Un océan sain signifie un avenir sain. A global ocean requires a global effort. Inspired by the wisdom and leadership of indigenous people who have lived in harmony with the ocean since time immemorial. Accelerated by innovation and change, and empowered by the next generation of stewards, conservationists, and scientists. Le Canada des Nations aux rues similaires ouvre la voie en élargissant un réseau mondial d'air marine protégé, durable et résiliente. By 2030, we must halt and reverse biodiversity loss. Canada fait des progrès comme jamais auparavant dans son engagement à protéger 25% de nos terres et 25% de nos cours d'eau d'ici 2025 et 30% d'ici 2030. By safeguarding biodiversity. by addressing the climate crisis. Good morning, everybody. And by advancing the blue economy. Today we come together to take a stand to protect our ocean. Welcome to Impact 5.
Many of you may have recognized the voice of, of Dr. Daniel Pauly, one of our keynote speakers, as the narrator of this video. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup, Dr. Pauly. Et maintenant, du gouvernement de la Colombie-Britannique, on behalf of the Honorable David Eby, Premier of British Columbia, please welcome Mr. Amandeep Singh, Parliamentary Secretary for Environment. Hello, everybody. It's my honor to join you this afternoon from the territory of the Musqueam, the Tsleil of Tooth, and the Squamish peoples. On behalf of Premier Eby and all British Columbians, I welcome you to Vancouver and to Impact 5. Andrea, where are you? There you are. We have to translate that into Punjabi one day. And Olivia, thank you for your, for your comments. Uh, and Emily, thank you for the introduction. It's wonderful to be here today to share in the enthusiasm, clearly, of all of you at Impact 5 in person, and I think some people are joining us virtually as well. The previous Congress, Impact 4, in Chile in 2017, uh, the pandemic affected so many things, including this Congress, delayed for a few years. That culminated in the rousing call to nations to take every possible action to meet the UN's Sustainable Development Goal number 14. That was a rallying cry for each of us globally to take action to conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas, and marine resources. We here don't take that responsibility lightly at all. People in British Columbia feel a deep tie to the ocean and the waterways that sustain us. How could we not? The Pacific Ocean is integral, not only to the culture, but also to the economy and the identity of the people of this province. Nearly three quarters of British Columbians and more than half of the First Nations in British Columbia live close to the coast. The ocean is seamlessly tied to our lifeblood and our provincial DNA. The province is committed to building a strong, secure future for everyone. That requires shared approaches to caring for the waters, land, and all the life that depends on healthy ecosystems. British Columbia has 200 designated marine protected areas located in all six of the provincial marine ecoregions. Marine protected areas are an important tool to protect and conserve marine habitats that support biodiversity, community well-being, and economic prosperity throughout British Columbia. Well-designed and managed MPAs can benefit the environment and support commercial sectors such as fisheries and tourism. We need to reduce the pressures that threaten marine life, community well-being, and economic stability. We're taking a very holistic approach to healthy ecosystems and biodiversity, including the recovery of iconic species like the wild Pacific salmon. Our government and First Nations are working in partnership to develop BC's first ever coastal marine strategy to support healthier marine ecosystems and habitats, community well-being, and a sustainable ocean economy. We've also worked closely with coastal First Nations, local communities, and groups, phenomenal groups like Ocean Legacy Foundation to clean up, clean up marine debris and plastic pollution from BC's coastlines. I think uh, within the last year, year and a half, about a thousand kilometers of BC's coastline have been cleaned up by this organization. This has been the largest shoreline cleanup in provincial history. We've removed over a thousand tons of debris, my mistake, not a thousand kilometers, 4,000 kilometers, employing close to 1,300 people with most of the debris recycled or upcycled. You're here for a few days. If you have a chance, visit them. They're in Richmond, the, uh, uh, just across the uh, uh, Fraser River there. Phenomenal organization. Across government, we're, we're committed to the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and co-creating policy and making decisions together to protect and conserve the countless species and habitats in the waters, lands, and coastal environments that have been home to First Nations for millennia. I look forward to continuing our work together. I wish you an enjoyable and productive Congress. Thank you. Merci. Thank you, Mr. Singh. As many of you are aware, Impact 5 is an official event of the United Nations Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. With a video message from the United Nations, we now present Dr. Vladimir Ryabinin, Assistant Director General of UNESCO and Executive Secretary of the International Oceanic Commission of UNESCO. 
Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, all courtesies observed. Thank you for the invitation to UNESCO to participate in IMPACT 5. I am delighted to represent the UNESCO Director General Audrey Azoulay at its leadership forum. In working with you, UNESCO will be able to capitalize on great experience and proud commitment of supporting its member states and partners in marine conservation and protecting natural and cultural heritage. We will be mobilized by the United Nations Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development, a global initiative led by UNESCO's Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission, the International Decade of Indigenous Languages that commenced in 2022 and is led by UNESCO, and also through our partnership in the United Nations Decade of Ecosystem Restoration and United Nations Water Action Decade. UNESCO will be working across the UN system, bringing together marine science, education, and culture. With its 50 marine world heritage sites and 235 biosphere reserves that include marine and coastal components, UNESCO is enriching ways and means of area-based management. New technologies and methods such as environmental DNA will help to increase the site's resilience and also to help adapt them to climate, to climate change. No one will be left behind. We strive for meaningful and active participation of, uh, of uh, indigenous people, local communities in our work, all actors. Through its, uh, the UNESCO Local and Indigenous Knowledge System program, which recently turned 20 years, UNESCO helps to generate and share essential knowledge on the management, governance, and sustainable use of marine natural and cultural heritage. This work is aligned with United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. The Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO is the United Nations agency responsible for ensuring that member states develop and have access to the knowledge for sustainable ocean management, including MPAs. Marine special planning, pioneered by IOC already over two last two decades, is a tool to make sure that MPAs are established in harmony with the needs of society. The new international legally binding agreement on biodiversity in the areas of uh, beyond national jurisdiction in the high seas will set ground rules for this work. IOC's other activities, including on ocean observations, data, ocean carbon, ocean justification, will contribute to making marine protected areas sustainable from an ecological and financial points of view. Ocean literacy is a must for improved management of marine resources. And IOC is, is partnering with the Canadian Ocean Literacy Coalition and the Marine Society, uh, Social Sciences Network to host the Ocean Literacy Dialogues as part of the Impact 5 Week. With the historic decision by the 15th Conference of Parties of Convention of Biological Diversity to adopt the Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework, the world now has a set of objectives for biodiversity protection, for inclusive and sustainable management. The world needs a larger area of marine protection, but also needs to ensure that MPAs are effective and efficient, are in harmony with the surrounding seascapes, and also that all actors, including indigenous peoples and local communities, are empowered to benefit from uh, from these areas and also contribute to their governments. The leadership forum, the Impact Five Week, will create the impulse for building the ocean movement of the Kunming Montreal framework. Discussions on resource mobilization, partnerships, multilateral cooperation will be particularly important so that communities and stakeholders across the world will have everything they need to achieve the desired impact. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the Kunming Montreal framework is our pathway to keep the world alive. Now it is up to each of us to work to ensure its implementation. On behalf of the UNESCO and also its Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO, let me wish you a very successful week of Impact 5. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rayabinen. We are now past the halfway point of our Impact 5 opening ceremony, and we need a little bit of energy for our next act. And I'm looking at you in those chairs, and I'm thinking a little stretch would do us good. And since we're all here to take a stand for the ocean, I propose we do the wave. 
OK? Je vous propose de faire la vague. Hacemos la ola. Uh, so I want everybody in the first section there, since you are pretty much touching the water, to stand up nice and proud when I, after I count down from five, and then the wave is going to travel through this room all the way to the other side, right there on this side. Does that work? You can count, count down with me in any language you want. Okay? I believe in you, people over there. We can do it. Okay? Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Ocean friends. Friends of the ocean, that was amazing. We'll do it one last time, and let's see if uh, the wave can bounce against the wall and return back to the global ocean. Okay, let's try that again. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, you all deserve a round of applause. That was amazing. Yeah, that was great. Now that we are all, we are ready for some more music with all this energy, Yves Lambert est bien reconnu pour son charisme et sa générosité en scène. Il est considéré comme point de référence lorsqu'on parle de musique folk Québécoise. Yves Lambert has been a vital force in Quebec folk music for more than three decades. Truly one of the greats. Representing Canada's Atlantic shores, please give a warm welcome, accueillons chaleureusement, the Yves Lambert Quartet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, I'm Yves Lambert from Quebec country, frozen country, you know, especially on this weekend. I, I like to play here <laughs> this afternoon, you know. It's a great honor for me too and for, for, it's a great honor for, my, for me and for my buddy to play for an extreme uh, important meeting. And, uh, and, and now I'm going to uh, play Coracol. It's a, you know, it's a fruit of the sea. <laughs> and, um, and I talk in French an uh, old letter to the, the First Nation great chief Seattle, right, of the, uh, a message, a message to the President of the United States about of the middle of the 19th century. Comment vendre ou acheter le ciel ou la terre si on ne possède pas le miroitement de l'eau ou la chaleur de la terre? Comment les acheter? Chaque parcelle de terre est sacrée. Chaque lambeau de brume dans le bois sombre. Chaque clairière et chaque bourdonnement des sectes est sacré. La terre n'appartient pas à l'homme. L'homme appartient à la terre. Ce n'est pas l'homme qui tisse la trame de la vie. Il en est seulement un fil. 
tout ce qu'il fait à la terre, il le fait à lui-même. Contaminons notre nid et nous suffoquerons une nuit dans nos propres détritus. Le hallier disparu et l'aigle disparu, c'est la fin de la vie, c'est le début de la survivance.
ja, ja. Okay. Yeah. Very good, very good. Just uh, put the little bug the, the feet. Just a little bit. And my voice too. It's too loud. Oh, yeah. I'm nervous. I'm excited. Yeah, uh, just another tune. Because the, the organizer, you know, like happy song. And now me, I'm the specialist of the happy song, you know. The, speci the best specialist of the world. Because the music of the Quebecois, the Quebecois traditional music, the most quality of the Quebecois, it's a happy music, you know. And I like because it's important for the human to have happy smile and also l'espoir, hope, and uh, yeah, happiness. Okay, yeah. you are ready? Yeah, and tap the f tap the feet, no problem. Oh, wait, two, three, four, <laughs> De mille ou beau été, hiver, il fait toujours beau. Quand c'est le temps de s'amuser, vous dit qu'on se fait pour prier. Et sur le père Joseph, on dans un autre temps qu'on pourra. Et sur le père Joseph, on dans un autre temps qu'on pourra. On est allé dans un festin au de galettes de sarrasin. C'est la fin poudrier, c'est la place pour se régaler. Oh, c'est la fin de ta Donaldo, si ça continue, il en restera pas. C'est la fin de ta Donaldo, si ça continue, il en restera pas. On est allé chez le père au vide, c'était pour un dîner au bin. C'est la fin, il y en a tant mangé, qui était en train de s'étouffer. Le père au vide, c'est ta grosse belle d'eau, pèse la traite au plein de soda. Bonsoir, qui t'adore, c'est la fin de vous de Rotillon. Il en a tellement mangé qu'il était en train de paralyser. Et t'adore, c'est à Gorgiano, Arc-en-Ciel fait signer un coup de soda. Et t'adore, c'est à Gorgiano, Arc-en-Ciel fait signer un coup de soda. Puis si la fin voit le gros docteur, il pensait qu'il était malade du cœur. Après une consultation, il dit saint pierre pour la prescription. Si la fin découragée, viande à chien, je l'ai pas ruiné. Si la fin découragée, oh, viande à chien, je l'ai pas ruiné. Au petit canot avec le père au vide et puis mille wombos Puis de calibou collait les sept Le grand bardeau jouait de la claquette Et ton don qui n'est pas tout là Soigne la baguette avec la belle idée Et ton don qui n'est pas tout là Soigne la baguette avec la belle idée Et t'es dans le temps des élections Puis de calibou sort son flacon Il dit faites pas ouais de rien Parlez à moi à Siraphin Si ça perçoit que je vous paye la traite Il va aller le dire à pas crête et la fin à la mairie est venue à bout de batte à Lexi Il en a perdu le moral, il dit je vais faire comme le père Pascal Et avec son porte-manteau, il est parti pour le Colorado Et avec son porte-manteau, il est parti pour le Colorado
grosse folle. Allez, ah, voilà. Un grand merci! Un grand merci! Merci beaucoup! Thank you so much. This was the Yves Lombard Quartet. Thank you. J'aimerais maintenant inviter, please welcome, Ms. Sandra Schwartz, National Executive Director for the Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society, the organization responsible for bringing Impact 5 to Vancouver and a key partner in this Congress. So thank you so much to the organizers for having me follow that great uh, uh, quartet, uh, because now I'm going to make you fall asleep again. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to say to the minister, uh, when you were talking about sort of stories and why we all sort of get involved in these, uh, you know, I reminded myself of, of the stories of when I was a young girl, uh, and my father is, is who um, uh, introduced me to sort of planetary concerns, uh, out canoeing, and uh, looking at the, the wonderful uh, trees in northern Ontario, and just thinking about how those were going to be deforested in a very short period of time. And at 12 years old, I then got involved in, uh, in a local campaign to save the, the Tomogamy Forest. And so I've continued my fight for the last 50 years. So good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour à tous. Merci à Emily. Uh, thank you so much to uh, the host nations for the incredible um, uh, gift that they brought to all of us, showing the culture and hearing their language uh, that I think many uh, have lost but are now finally regaining again. And it's for all of us as Canadians and I think globally to also remember uh, what was lost, but not completely uh, forgotten as it is starting to come back again. So my name is Sandra Schwartz and I'm the National Executive Director at the Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society. La Société pour la Nature et les Parcs du Canada en français. Un grand merci à toutes et à tous d'être ici avec nous en ce grand jour. Thank you to each and every one of you for being here with us on this very exciting day. CPAWS is honored to be a key partner and co-host of Impact 5 alongside the Government of Canada, the province of British Columbia, and of course, our host, First Nations. In particular, I would like to express my sincere appreciation and thanks to the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations for welcoming us on their traditional territories for this Congress. I'd also like to extend gratitude to the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation on whose unceded territory our national office is located. CPAWS has been a leading voice for conservation in Canada since 1963 with the vision to protect at least half of ocean and land across the country. And so we're very pleased to mark the start of our 60th anniversary year with this landmark event. With 13 chapters across Canada and an active ocean program for over 30 years, CPAWS has played a key role in the establishment and management of some of Canada's most important and vulnerable marine protected, excuse me, marine protected areas across the Pacific, Arctic, and the Atlantic coasts. So from the ancient and unique glass sponge reefs, which are found here in, B in BC, to the magnificent Bank de Marocain in the Gulf of St. Lawrence, to the deep sea canyons of the Laurentian Channel off the coast of Newfoundland. Through this work, CPAWS has helped to increase protected and marine coastal areas from less than 1% in 2015, which the minister spoke to today, to more than 14% today, while strengthening Canada's legal tools to protect the ocean and pushing for the establishment of minimum protection standards for all MPAs. But there is still a lot to do. And the scale of the biodiversity crisis, along with the climate crisis, does demand faster action and it demands better protection. So we're gathering here today for Impact 5 at a critical and opportune time. It was just a few weeks ago that the world came together in Montreal and agreed to an ambitious global biodiversity framework that commits us to protect 30% of ocean by 2030. 
That means we're just eight years away from needing to double the amount of ocean protected in Canada and more than triple the area protected globally. Impact 5 is our opportunity to take the ambition and energy of Montreal and turn it into real action on the water. We're here to learn from each other, to share our knowledge and experiences, to listen to Indigenous leaders, and to chart a course to a brighter and a bluer future for, by 2030. Well, 2030 might seem somewhat far away, and 30% protection might seem daunting in a sh frankly short period of time, we do know that it's possible both here in Canada and globally. We've seen countries like Canada make great leaps in protection in recent years. Where there's commitment and political will, we do understand and know that there is a way. So I'm inspired by the leadership of Indigenous nations who have long been stewards of these coasts and this ocean. These nations have steadily and persistently moved towards a healthy, a vision for a healthy and abundant and equitable ocean through the creation of Indigenous protected and conserved areas and guardians programs. To protect the ocean and the blue nature on which we all depend, we must work together respectfully and with reciprocity to turn ambition into action and words into true reconciliation. CPAWS has been working on Impact 5 for over six years now. It's hard to believe that we're finally here. I would like to thank everyone involved for all the work to make this event go from concept to reality. And in particular, I would like to thank my very hardworking ocean team from CPAWS, as well as the other organizers. I look forward to the inspiring conversations that are going to happen over the next few days and in the week to come. So thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Ms. Schwartz. J'aimerais maintenant inviter, please help me to welcome onto the stage Dr. Madhu Rao, Chair of the World Commission on Protected Areas of the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Hello and a very good afternoon to all of you. I'd like to start by thanking our host nations, the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Tsleil-Waututh nations. Thank you for sharing your unceded ancestral territories with Impact 5 delegates and for your continued stewardship of this coast, ocean, and land. Distinguished participants, friends, and colleagues, on behalf of the IUCN and the World Commission on Protected Areas, I'm delighted to extend a very warm welcome to all of you to the Fifth International Marine Protected Areas Congress. The IUCN brings together governments, conservation organizations, and a diverse range of state and non-state actors in a unique global partnership for conservation. The WCPA, as one of its seven commissions, is proud to co-host the IMPACT series since the first Congress held in Australia in 2005 as a forum convening MPA managers and practitioners. The previous Congress in Chile in 2017 invigorated the MPA agenda in Latin America, splashing a wave of marine conservation across new regions. Impact 5 comes to us at the heels of the recent adoption of the Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework. Our hope is that the Congress will contribute significantly to the momentum around protecting 30% of high biodiversity marine areas by 2030 through effectively and equitably managed marine protected areas. Our ocean is facing huge unprecedented challenges from overfishing to plastic pollution to the impacts of climate change, causing the collapse of entire ecosystems. The ocean has long been our neglected ally in addressing climate change and taken the brunt of the impact of anthropogenic global warming. Marine protected areas can be the critical piece 
linking the twin crises of biodiversity loss and climate change. The tide is turning. We have significant opportunity to build on advancements in science and technologies while drawing on traditional knowledge and ground up approaches in developing effective solutions. With the new international agreement on the conservation and sustainable use of marine biodiversity of areas beyond national jurisdiction, the BBNJ agreement on the horizon, now is the time to start laying the foundation for successful implementation. With all of you, IMPACT 5 convenes leaders, practitioners, and decision makers from Canada and around the world to respond effectively to these global challenges. As nations prepare to implement ambitious global biodiversity and climate targets, this Congress is an important opportunity for us to collectively build momentum toward a bold commitment for the recovery of the ocean. The World Commission on Protected Areas stands committed to support this process of recovery through the delivery of scientific, technical, and policy advice and advocacy for effective and equitable marine protected area systems. I thank the Government of Canada and all of its constituent agencies for leadership and commitment in hosting this Congress, and to all of you for your engagement and participation. Your knowledge, experience, and commitment are key to securing the ocean for people and for nature. I wish all of us an engaging and impactful Congress. Thank you. Un grand merci. Thank you, Dr. Rao. Maintenant, de retour en musique. Both hailing originally from Nunavut and representing Canada's Arctic coast, please welcome to the stage Linda Brown and Alianai Niviatsiuk of Sequenia Pilota. Explain if you've never heard throat singing before. Um, this is the Inuit Canadian version, and it's uh, traditionally done by two women, and it's a friendly competition. And the whole point is trying to make the other person laugh. So whoever laughs first loses. Um, and uh, we don't actually sing at the same time, even though we're making the same sounds. There's a leader and a follower, and the leader sets the rhythm, the pace, and the sound, and the follower is following about half a second afterwards, repeating it back. And that's usually where it, where it gets a little funny because sometimes you go at the same time or you make a weird sound. And we have three different kinds of throat songs. We have lullabies, we have imitations, and we have competitions. So that was a competition sound called hama. We'll now demonstrate an imitation sound. This is called the mosquito. Just to clarify, I usually don't lose. I'm just nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I always win. Ask my other throat singing partners. Friendly competition. <laughs> uh, this one's called the mosquito or a hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
this is hard to call who laughed first. <laughs> she did. <laughs> uh, the next one that we're going to do for you is a lullaby. And this comes from the Baker Lake region of Nunavut. And if you know anything about the Arctic, almost, well, all of our communities are coastal communities, so we have connection to the ocean, except for Baker Lake. It's an inland community. I mean, they're connected through rivers, but um, their throat singing is a little bit different from other areas. And so this is a little bit softer. And it's actually what we would use to put our babies to sleep. I'm wearing a traditional woman's jacket called the Namauti. Our babies go on our back here not in the hood, they'd fall out. Um, and you can imagine doing this, and the baby's right against mom's back, and you do a little rock, they're out like a light. So this is a love song. at the same time. I won. I, I did it on purpose. <laughs> By and make. And our last song is my absolute favorite song. This is called Kimeloapik, which means poor little dog. And it comes from the northern Quebec region called Nunavik. And a little girl made this song up for her puppy. And her puppy was the runt of a litter. And if you know anything but dog sleds, runts usually don't make it onto a dog sled because they're not too strong. But she really wanted her puppy to be the leader of her dog sled. And so she sang this song to it every day. And so this is Kimalapik. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Nous sommes maintenant ravis de vous présenter un message personnel de son excellence, la très honorable Mary Simon, gouverneure générale et commandante en chef du Canada. Now, we're delighted to present a personal message from Canada's head of state, Her Excellency, the Right Honorable Mary Simon, Governor General and Commander in Chief of Canada. Hello, bonjour, dunga suwitsi. Although I'm sorry I can't be with you today, I still wanted to speak to you as the work that you're doing here is vital. The future, as you know, depends on the health of our oceans. La travail que vous faites ici est très important. L'avenir dépend de la santé de nos océans. Thank you to the organizers for inviting me to address Impact 5. Let me first share with you the story of Inuit. Over millennia, 
Inuit have lived near the ocean in harmony with animals and seasons. In fact, 50% of Canada's coastline is in Inuit Nunangat. The ocean and the marine environment is part of our way of life. It's central to our identity, our perception of the world, our stories and even our language based on thousands of years of experience, knowledge and observation. I grew up in Nunavik and I remember how the water sustained my family and community. Without water or ice, we were isolated. That's the reality in remote regions. There's no road systems to other areas. Back then, the primary connection was by boat in the summer and by dog team in the winter. Today, it's by boat or canoe and snowmobile. That's an integral part of northern life. The water was also a place to provide for, for our families. It provides much of the food source, essential protein, omega oils and nutrients come from the oceans and the rivers with fish and other marine life. It sustains us and it's how we continue to live in the North and the Arctic. I share this with you because I learned something important very early in life. The ocean is not just important to humanity, it is a human right. It is, it is essential to our existence and justifiably belongs to every person. We are all entitled to a healthy ocean. Nous avons tout droit à un océan sain. More than 120 countries are represented at the Congress. We all recognize the monumental task ahead of us to preserve our oceans so that we have a future. But no matter our differences in language or landmass, culture or climate, our oceans connect us. Advancing marine conservation must be an ex inclusive exercise that aims to support the unique and often at risk heritage and environment of coastal communities and island nations. These places rely on the oceans to support culture, language, social well-being and economies. Their future requires us to come together and meet our global nature and climate imperatives. It is clear that we need a global approach to this global issue and we cannot delay in acting. A healthy ocean is essential for our survival, yet we have not always treated it that way. We've become experts at taking from the ocean, whether it's food, resources or minerals, but we have failed to give back in equal measure. And what we do give back in plastics or noise or pollutants is damaging. We desperately need balance. We need to think three-dimensionally about the ocean, what it gives us, what we put back, and what the future holds. After all, we are all connected to the ocean, socially, culturally, and economically. Let's look at the lobster in industry in Canada, for example. About three billion worth of lobster is exported every year. As temperatures rise in our oceans, the lobsters may not be content to stay in their traditional territory. They will move to find a more temperate place to live. They will not be the only marine animals to do so. Or consider how climate change is also melting ice and glaciers in the Arctic. For Inuit, this means that the traditional way of life is being disrupted and destroyed. That same ice melt is also raising water levels, endangering coastal communities and island nations. Tuvalu, for example, is building a digital version of its country to preserve its history, culture, and language. If things continue on this course, there is a good chance the nation will be submerged by the end of the century. But hope still exists and I want to encourage all of you to turn that hope into action. 
Already, we are working together as we continue cross-border collaboration and as we try to change our habits, I would encourage us to ask how close can we get to every ocean, every waterway being sustainable, protected and ready to support humanity now and for generations to come. We must identify areas of extreme stress and recognize the challenges ahead before it is too late. We must recognize where we are falling short. We must work with global cooperation to address ocean security. And we must forge a greater understanding of how oceans influence us and how we influence the oceans. In Canada and in other countries, that requires us to consider this relationship in regional, cultural and linguistic terms and it requires Canada to think about its relationship with indigenous peoples and with the land we call home. More Canadians and more people around the world need to understand how connected we are and how our actions are impacting ocean health. We need to further education beyond those attending this Congress and beyond experts in the field. We need to have the support of the public on these issues, which are not easily faced and may require large changes in the way we think and the way we do things. In this way, we improve not only the oceans and our climate, but also food security, governance, energy, national security, and much more. It begins by meeting our global goals for ocean protection. It begins by building partnerships not only with coastal communities, but also with indigenous peoples who have been stewards of this land longer than anyone. They can teach us what we need to know. For the longest time, the term indigenous-led conservation was not readily accepted. Today, we recognize the important work indigenous peoples have done to protect our environment. It's past time we listen to their wisdom. The future of nature and our planet requires partnerships with indigenous peoples. The answers to some of our challenges can be found in their traditional knowledge. I also believe that partnering with First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples on marine conservation is a real way to advance reconciliation in Canada. The Nautsitoktit Inuit Steward Program, for example, are the eyes and ears in communities along the Hikaktani region. They manage the marine areas by monitoring the ecological health of the region and by promoting the use of traditional Inuit knowledge. They also provide for the communities they serve by safely harvesting these areas and sharing what they catch. In BC, there is Coastal First Nations Great Bear Initiative, an alliance of First Nations on the Pacific North Coast who set out to have greater access to resources and a larger say in how they are managed. Since its inception, members have worked to reach innovative agreements with the provincial government to ensure that coastal First Nations take an active role in developing a conservation-based economy. This includes planning for the best and most responsible uses of the water. I hope that all of us, Canadians, but also all our friends at Impact 5, can embrace the spirit of indigenous-led conservation. The ocean is a transformative power and we can be as well if we come together, if we set our goals, if we are bold in action and thought. We can turn the tide. I encourage you to learn, share and get to work on healing our waters. Look not just at short-term gains, but also long-term planning. What actions can we take today that will heal our waters a century or more from now? This task cannot wait. And though difficult, I know we can succeed. 
I wish you the very best in all your efforts. Thank you. Merci to Her Excellency. This concludes the official portion of Impact 5 opening ceremony. Thank you to all of our speakers and performers. Ceci conclut la portion officielle de la cérémonie d'ouverture de l'Impact 5. Un grand merci aux artistes et à tous ceux qui nous ont adressé la parole aujourd'hui. We are so delighted to have you with us here in Canada. Impact 5 is a pick your own adventure congress and the best way for you to know where and when to go throughout your experience here is by using the Chime platform. N'oubliez pas que la plateforme Chime sera votre meilleur guide tout au long du congrès. In addition to the conference program, I know you will enjoy the Ocean Expo on the exhibit level below us which will also be the location for our daily luncheons and the Distinguished Speaker Series and our daily maritime mix and mingle happy hour, featuring amazing performances, including much more from Andre Amenar and Yves Lambert Quartet, which you've heard on stage today. Nous espérons que vous apprécierez toutes les activités qui auront lieu dans la salle d'exposition. L'Expo Océan, les petits déjeuners quotidiens, la série de conférenciers de renom et la mêlée maritime, un rendez-vous quotidien en musique. Speaking of music, following today's reception, which begins immediately in the lobbies, right around the building on this level, please join me at the Jackpool Plaza just outside of this building on the west side as we kick off the spectacular Impact 5 Ocean Festival, featuring some of Canada's finest musicians and amazing ocean learning activities. Joignez-vous à moi au Festival de l'Océan de l'Impact 5 à la Jackpool Plaza, située à l'extérieur, du côté ouest de l'édifice. Mettons en vedette des musiciens canadiens extraordinaires et de multiples activités interactives ayant l'océan comme thématique. Check out this video! <laughs> Thank you so much. Wishing you a wonderful Impact Five. Thank you.